Welcome everybody. I'm Tony Underwood. I'm the Music Man and you're on the Quiz the Music Man podcast. I don't really like that name, but I couldn't really figure out anything better. So that's what it is. I'm Tony Underwood. I'm the Music Man. And we talk about all things music. And that kind of bleeds over into career, all kind of things. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, we got some special stuff. Make sure you wait till the end because I reveal the secrets of the world. The secret to life. But today we're going to talk about who are you? You know the song by the, there's a group called, used to be called The Who, <laughs> if you Google it. <laughs> and uh, they had a big song, Who Are You? It was the theme song to the show CSI, the original CSI. There's CSI's on all, still, but the original CSI I think is off the air. But that's the song, and it asks, who are you? Who, 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 who? Yeah, who the bleep are you? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Who are you? And why are we doing that? Well, let me share with you why. I get asked... Uh, the probably the uh, question I'm asked the most are things like you know what instrument should my child uh, learn how do I uh, become a musician how do I make money how do I do this uh, with this song and uh, it all comes back to this and also you know a lot of the students grow up and make career choices that aren't going to be in, in the arts which is great, you know, they want to be engineers and things like that. And I can tell you straight away that the ones that are good musicians are going to be good at everything because we teach life skills. Uh, they learn really uh, cool skills that they can use. Get that out of the way. And uh, so uh, we kind of coach them a little bit. Uh, and if they want to make a career in the arts, we can help with that too. Uh, but this is a huge question it goes into that uh, so before we get into that what I'm gonna do is uh, trying to get to my notes here I'm not trying to okay uh, we're gonna we're gonna do an instrument review and a review of some gear well it's not gear it's a recording programs and uh, it's kind of a trick we're going to review every instrument there is, and we're also going to review every recording device that there is. And how are we going to do that? Let's talk about instruments, because that's a big topic of discussion. And what I wish, there's two things I wish I could use my two genie wishes on. I won't tell you what the third would be, but uh, if Aladdin came out of the lamp, uh, I truly would love to... Oh, that thing is just getting on my nerves. There we go. Uh, oh, it's moving back. That's why. I truly would want to be able to have every school, whether it's a STEM school or an academic school or an athletic school or an art school, I would like them to have a class starting in about third, maybe fifth grade. Fifth grade would be ideal. And that class is every day for the same time as every other class, and you explore music. Now, I don't mean you put a, uh, you know, a musical note on the wall and play games with it. All that's good, and I definitely am not making fun of that. I think that's something we should do. Now, what I'm talking about is actually explore music, be able to play instruments for an extended period of time, have a module on uh stringed instruments, guitar, on percussion instruments. Piano is a percussion instrument. It could have a module all on its own. Um, guitar, violin, viola, cello, bass, uh, electric guitars, uh, wind instruments, brass instruments, trumpet, trombone, baritone, French horn, tuba, uh, reed instruments like saxophone and clarinet, double reeds like oboe and bassoon. Um, 
and percussion instruments and on and on and I hope I'm not leaving anybody out but uh, uh, electric uh, instruments, electric keyboards. So why is that? Here's what happens. A student will come in sometimes in elementary school and they are just buzzed for music and the parents are just buzzed because they want their kid, they know their kid has been singing or playing the drums or something and they just want to really have them uh, get going. The parents are so enthusiastic and the kids so enthusiastic and our instructors are enthusiastic and it goes for a few months and then it kind of just doesn't work. The kid's frustrated, the parents are upset she's not practicing. Uh, the parent usually comes in and tells us this, which we know every lesson how much that kid's practiced. Um, and it's not always necessary to practice every week either. It's your whole development. But I see it in a lot of students. I can tell it's coming. I try to prep everybody. But as human beings, we don't always receive. And I, I take it as a failure of me not to get that across. But a lot of it is just human nature. We do not um, receive what people are saying because we don't speak the language yet. Um, what they have is a, a real desire for music, but they don't know what they like. Uh, they don't know uh, what they need to know to even make a decision. Because at first, the physical manipulation of an instrument can be really cool. But then after a while, you're kind of like, well, you know, I thought I liked this, but I don't. That's because you, you haven't had enough time to experience different things in a, in a situation that was a little bit easier. Now, we change instruments, and a lot of times the, the students and parents that really have some commitment will say, well, they don't want guitar, they want to try piano. Now, we know at this point if the child should try another instrument or just take a break. But um, we encourage them to at least maybe try a couple other things a month at a time. You're not going to waste your money. You'll have learned great lessons. You'll have learned about music. You'll have some experiences. But we just don't have the time to have a class where you could come in and learn that. Because I have tried to schedule that class, and absolutely nobody wants to come to it. And I don't find these classes anywhere. They might have some general music classes, but they're really more like uh, uh, babysitting or watching classes, which there's nothing wrong with that either, but that's not going to teach you enough about music. Uh, a nice hour-long class once a week that goes three months minimum, you can at least get in touch with some instruments. And that's really what I wish parents and students would think about doing. Uh, and I'm going to actually open up one of those again because I just it's something that I've been trying for years and maybe it's because I don't have the right attitude I don't have the right presentation I don't know but I'm gonna just keep trying it in a different way so uh, if anybody's out there thinking about lessons and you're in the Lake Mary Longwood Florida area give us a shoot me a text or call I'd love to hear your comments anyone out there that is in music that has done this is successful at it. Here's one of the things about class music. Unless you're in school in a band, I don't like it. And here's why. It's all dependent on the teacher. And while we might all be great instructors, very few of us are good group instructors. I don't feel comfortable teaching class after class of 30 kids in a group as a way to teach them an instrument. There are much better people, but there are so few of them, that's why you don't see that anywhere. I like doing smaller groups. I can do that great. And I can do a large group, but I can't do enough of it to make it worth my while, personally to do, because I'm running a business. And it's tough to find someone that really has the fortitude to do that. So that's a teacher-centric. So you find a teacher that has class violin or class piano, outside of a school, take it. And if you just want them to kind of get an idea, they can take it. But even in school, it's tough. Tough to keep their attention. And I really got to give it to the teachers because they're they're good at what they do and they're trying. But it's, it's 
I've never seen it be that fruitful. So, but I wish there was a way to kind of counterman that. But if nothing else, as a parent and as a student, let them try different things for a while. And, you know, if you're going to get them lessons and they don't have a burning desire and don't know, start them in piano and guitar or guitar. And that's a good basic instrument that they can get the basics of music and actually play some chords and things in, in a short time and sing along with it and be part of what there is. Now, some people say, well, that's what everybody does. Let me share something with you. No, they don't. There are very, very few people that can play guitar or piano well enough and have the fortitude to stick with it enough to just accompany simple chords on a song. They'll learn one song, but this is a skill that you should be able to do over and over. There's very few people because it takes a long time to be able to do that. It takes work. It takes, you know, the good old term stick to it in this <laughs> commitment, giving up other things to do that thing. So the next time you hear someone maybe on the sidewalk that's got his cup out and he's playing amazing, you're like, well, why isn't this person, you know, why be a musician? Because you're going to be like that. Well, I think you're looking at it wrong because I could go up and, you know, to uh, a 12-step program and find the doctors in there that have ruined their life and say, well, why do you want to be a doctor, an uh, architect, or even a lawn care guy? I could do that same thing. Um, that's not really the point because I would rather you say, oh, yeah, you know, it'd be terrible to make as much money as Beyonce. It'd be terrible to make as much money as one of her uh, uh, session musicians. You know, 50 grand a song, 2,500 a song, uh, go on tour, make 100 grand. Uh, so the, the ability uh, to make that into something that's successful is there. So what's the right instrument? It's the one that you feel you're comfortable with and you can play it and you can uh, uh, start playing music. Within three to six months, you should be able to do a basic, and I mean basic, uh, melody line and on a guitar and a piano, maybe play a few chords. There are instructors that only go by the classical book and that might be years, and we get these people in all the time, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, so don't torch me for that. If you're an instructor, I know it's hard enough. But it's kind of a two-way street because uh, we do group makeup lessons here, and it's, it's like pulling teeth to get a parent to let their kid come to one. They think they're missing out. You know, and to get the owner of the company that only really does professionals to run a group meeting which will give your child more music than that they'll have in a year of private lessons it's just a different way they get that camaraderie that sense of what a group is and of course they don't like it they don't like broccoli they don't like doing their homework they don't like taking a bath they get to that age so why let them do it that doesn't make sense I don't make any money when the kids take a bath I'm not going to pay all this money for kids to go take a bath. Yeah, you, you should. Let them do those group lessons because that's where they're going to change their thinking. And they're going to go, oh, this is good. They're going to be like the people in South Africa who had farms. And all they did was woe and lament this stupid two acres I've got. Because all these stupid rocks breaking my shovel, I'm going to get rid of this thing and sell it to somebody. And then the man came back and he said, you're in a huge house, you bought all these other farms. What happened? And the guy said, well, remember those stupid rocks that was breaking your shovel and your plow and you used to throw into the uh, lake and the river and you didn't like them? He said, well, I figured out those are diamonds. And that's a true story. So 
Uh, I'm not saying you're going to find acres of diamonds in your child's music, but you can. Anyone can learn to play music. It's not easy. It's not easy. I've, uh, I love math. I love physics. I was always great in academics. Uh, I was never on the football team, but I definitely went out for it, and they wanted to have me on it. Uh, I played sports very well. Uh, uh, but music was the most difficult thing for me. It's what I ended up doing because I like it so much, but it was not easy. But, you know, nothing that's worth anything is easy, and if you just apply yourself, you're going to be successful at it. So what instrument? Look around. If you don't know, try guitar and piano, and then listen to other instruments. Uh, some places will let you do maybe a month of a different kind of instrument uh, or something. Some won't, so then maybe uh, rent a brass instrument and do some online lessons once you know a little bit about, uh, about this. Go to a place and ask just to take one or two lessons just to get the basics and then work on yourself. And if you like it, then go back to them and take lessons from them. So that's how you find out what instrument is right for you. You just won't know unless you do some background work and you allow yourself some time to learn what you like and what works for you. Now the second thing is any musician should, should learn to record themselves. Now, I'm not saying that that should be how you eventually record all your songs. You may want to just hire somebody. That's fine. But you should do it yourself a little bit. And everybody wants to know what's the best DAW, digital audio workstation. You've heard all these names, Pro Tools, uh, Logic, uh, One, um, uh, FL Studios, uh, Reaper. Uh, there's on and on. So the best one is for you to start where you are and if you have an iPhone probably the best one let me show you the easy way to do it is free and it's right here on your iPhone if it ever comes up I'll show it to you um, it's gonna take a while to load here it is loading GarageBand so what does GarageBand look like uh, it's just a program where you have, let's start, try my songs here. Uh, the thing I like about it is, let me go and see if this is a real song or if this is just something. It's a grand piano. So I just recorded a snippet. Uh, you have a keyboard here. You can play lots of different instruments. This has a, let's see what we got here on this. Sorry, you're just kind of looking to see what we got. Oh, let me put it back. That's why I can do it. Huh? Oh, that's it. There we go. We have keyboards, drums, amps for your guitar, audio recorder. It has a built-in microphone, strings, bass, guitar, world instruments. It has a drummer that's an actual drummer. So if you pick acoustic, let's listen. You can have him set all kind of different things different instruments. So that doesn't sound very good because I don't even know if that works. Uh, Built-in microphone. Uh, and if you're just starting out and just doing piano and your voice or uh, guitar and your voice or just instrumental, it's perfect. Now, I don't know if there's something that would work on a Android. I'm sure there is. Uh, let me actually look here. Uh, there's probably a lot of them. Let me look here. Um, I 
FL Studio Mobile popped up. And there's a lot of different apps that you can do the same thing. Uh, why should you do that? Because you need to gain experience, okay? You need to gain some experience and make some mistakes. Because failure equals failure to make mistakes. If you're not out there doing it, you're never going to learn. And let me share with you what failure really means if... Uh, oh, let me go back to my uh, notes. If I say I want you to walk from Louisiana to California, and I say start, and you start walking, you get all your preparations, you get your backpack, you got your phones, you got your water, you're ready to stop at certain places and rest. rest. And two days later, I find you and say, hey, boy, what a fail. You're awful. You're not even out of Louisiana. And you go, well, uh, give me some time. Oh, give me some time. And if you're telling me every step is exactly toward your spot in California, I'm going to disagree. In fact, it's impossible to go for a straight line from Louisiana to California. Not impossible, but highly improbable, because you'd have to dig a tunnel. Because regardless if you think the earth is flat or round, there are mountains and hills between you and California. So that's not a trick question. You can't get there. That's a fail. Now, see, I think you haven't failed. It's just had not been enough time. So your goal shouldn't change. You can modify it the more you learn about your goal. I want to go to... Uh, San Diego, California, because they have the best houses. And then along your way, you find out, oh, really? Uh, Malibu has better houses. Maybe I'll go there. It's, so don't modify your, your essence of your goal. You can modify it. Don't get rid of it. But you can change your mode. You might say, this is taking too long. I quit. Well, get you a little motorcycle, a moped, a bicycle. I'll get you an electric bike. You know, there's different ways of doing that. So... Uh, that's how you, by never failing, you're never going to succeed. So get out there and do it. And what's the best recording program? It is the one you have. Uh, if you have a PC, you can download, it's called Audacity, that's free. Now the problem with the more expensive ones is you have to use plugins. Plugins are things like extra engineering things, extra mixing things, extra sounds. GarageBand has a lot, and you can actually, with uh, another uh, app called AudioBus, you can add different things to it. But your basic sound, if you're playing guitar and singing, just record guitar and sing and see how it works. Mix it, master it, go online, go to Graham Cochran, Recording Revolution, or uh, 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 Pete Johns uh, with GarageBand on your iPhone on YouTube and you'll get all the info you need to get started. So that's the best. Logic, Pro Tools, GarageBand, Audacity, FL Studios, a mobile app, I don't know. Find one that's easy for you to learn and then step up when you need to. Uh, that's going to be the best recording program for you. Alright, those are two kind of trick reviews and uh, I'm not trying to trick you, I'm just trying to uh, get you to understand um, Sometimes you have to change your whole mindset, you know. Um, most people cannot recognize an outline of the U.S. They think it's Australia. How does that work? If you take the map of the U.S., the outline, and just turn it upside down, people will not be able to, most people will not be able to recognize it. Look at photos of favorite actors and turn them upside down before you look at them. See who it is. There's a, another thing that's, <laughs> that shows like Steve Buscemi, the actor, and his head's turned around, but his face, they've kind of cut it out and turned it back right side up. And people don't know what they're looking at. So you have to change your paradigm, your thinking. So let's get on to our main part of our podcast. Who are you? I don't know. Who am I? I don't know. That's a song too. Who am I? 
I don't, I don't know the rest of that song. I have to figure that out. So what kind of person are you? Who you are? What feeds you and what do you feed? So what's the secret to life? I'm going to tell you a little later, but I'm going to tell you how to get on board. One is find out who you are. Then find out what feeds you and what you feed and then monetize it. That's the key kind of to success. So when you're trying to figure out who you are, you can take these tests, uh, but you know, tests change over time because people change over time. And sometimes the attributes that a test might pick up on aren't what are gonna give you something to do the rest of your life. So here's what you need to figure out. What did you do as a child? And so you're not going to say, well, I'm obviously destined to play with, play with Legos. <laughs> but <laughs> you can use what traits, what characteristics are there. So you love building things. You love working with your hands. You love visualizing. Uh, you love being with a group of other people that did Legos. What did people who knew you as a child say about you? What would they say? Oh, I knew they were going to be a star. They were always singing. Oh, I knew he took apart the toaster when he was six, you know. So don't, uh, don't beat that up and don't ignore that. Do it. Just feed it. Listen, the more you feed it, and if you have to feed it on your own time, then do it. Go to class. Take all your math classes, do your homework, and then start taking apart toasters. You know, do it in a way that you don't get in trouble. Go to a dumpster and get some old toasters and take them apart. And throw out the crap and don't leave it laying around. There's an old adage. Uh, I know it. I'm not going to. I don't know where it started. I, I, I've always heard it from England. Show me the boy at seven and I'll show you the man. They actually did a study. <laughs> They looked at three kids when they were seven years old, and then they showed you 20 years later. Now, when they showed you, they showed you all three of them at once 20 years later, uh, one at a time, but it was in a long shot. You couldn't recognize them. So, you know, sometimes you can recognize an adult from their child. It was too far away, but you could kind of see how they moved and how they talked. I picked them out just like that. Now they were doing some strange activities, but their personality was the same. And I think some of them had the wrong activity for their personality and they would admit it. But anyway, that's what happened. So what kind of time, uh, what kind of uh, person were you at seven? Ask people who knew you at seven. Make some notes. You know, that's fifth, maybe sixth grade, maybe seventh. I'm sorry, no, sixth and seventh. That's a first, second, third grade. What were you doing there? The older, the better of that, up to seven. Um, think about what things you've tried that you've really liked, that you would say, I would do this if I would won the lottery. I might do this a couple days a week. What would you do if you're not paid? What would you do with yourself? Now, no vacationing and enjoying things. What would you do? I had a guy who loved fishing, but he said, you know, I took some people fishing and I just loved that. I said, well, you need to be a fishing guy. Um, what's important in your life? What things do you value? Do you value being outside, inside? Do you feel comfortable working with your hands? Do you feel comfortable talking? Working with a mouse, working with tools, working with machinery, working with computers. Uh, money's important, but money is just transportation. So don't think I want a million dollars. Think I want to be where I can pay all my bills. All right, that's a whole nother, it's a whole nother uh, podcast. But you have to know your why. If you're having trouble with money, it's because of your why. It's not what you're doing. It's why you're doing what you're doing. Anybody can tell you, you know, stop vices and 
uh, live in a smaller house and you know save 50 percent of everything you make if you start out like that you never go wrong live within your means but you know put put twenty dollars a month away when you're 20 and stop when you're 26 you'll have more money than if you start when you're 26 and put it away the rest of your life that's true simplify your life get rid of things stop doing all this noise stop just going out with the guys or the girls or playing this playing that go out once a month or once every two weeks simplify it. get rid of a junk you don't use if you haven't used it for a year get rid of it it's just dragging you down clothes uh, toys uh, cars stuff in your garage i got stuff in my garage oh my gosh the other day i saw something i had for 30 years it was a wrench i'm like i didn't use this sucker now i do use wrenches but i didn't use this one crazy and i've gotten rid of stuff i get rid of stuff like crazy but you know you just you get stuff stop getting stuff save invest a percentage of everything you make start today stay off your devices engage in different activities shadow intern volunteer these are ways to find out what you like if you're not on your devices if you're not out with the girls or the boys if you're not goofing off you're going to be lonely and you're going to want to do something so you can't just do don't just do something to fill your time go do something productive and change it every day or two and see what you like so if you shadow or intern or volunteer at different places i would say just go all to all kind of different places here's why it's not the thing you're doing so try this and see if you're suited too i'm going to give you some examples Try a coding class and do it free online. It'll see if you're suited to self-study, repetition, making little things work. Uh, a food drive, like Second Harvest or, or something. Work in their warehouse. You'll see if you like the outdoors, if you like the labor, if you like dealing with people, things coming and going outside, the fresh air. Uh, an attorney. See if you like hearing people's problems or de defending people or going after people. Uh, see if you like research and long hours. City Event Center, go volunteer. See if you like uh, solving people's problems and putting on events and moving stuff logistically. I can tell you from putting on shows, that's the worst part. You're always tripping over wires, you leave something behind the piano, forgot the keyboard oh my god it's but for the right person it's it's a boon they love it that's the thing you you want to look at this and say why well, I can't work for the city well don't don't say that say you don't want to do uh, I don't want to be moving stuff around and all this minutiae stuff is killing me or you might say oh no I don't want all that responsibility of, of you know somebody might lose money and, and stuff uh, on these different things ask yourself do you like a big or a small house or a place to live do you like to be around a lot of people or a few people how do you know go around a few people and see if that's good for you go around a lot of people see what you think do you like boats cars planes bicycles uh, do you like creating something new or do you like the same thing over and over again uh, I met two people once, and third person said, yeah, I'm in a factory. What do you do? Well, for the last 20 years, uh, these truck fenders has come by, and I put this thing on it, and it goes on. It comes and goes on. And the guy's like, you did that for 30 years? It's like, yeah, I work, you know, eight hours a day, and I do two to four hours overtime, too. One guy just big, big eyes, both of them. And I said, well, what are you guys thinking about? One guy's like, Oh my God, I'd do myself in. And you guys are like, what are you, crazy? I'd love to do that. So see, you're just a different person. And they might try that, and one might find that he does like it. And the other one might find he doesn't like it. So give it a try. Now, after you've done all these things, you've done many different jobs, you might want to take six months to a year. Make sure you've got different kinds of jobs. Then it's time to narrow it down and go uh, as you're, 
you need to narrow it down by this. You, as a child, if you're a child, you can do this easy. If you're not, use your vacations. So let's say I have people who like to be actors. Well, they usually don't know if they want to do theater or movies and TV, and usually they want to do all of it. I'm saying you can't do all of it. Not at once. No matter who you are, they're only doing one thing at a time. Hugh Jackman is not making a Wolverine movie and singing on Broadway. He does them at different times. So I tell them to take two weeks and go to New York and do the summer stuff all the wannabe actors do. Take a class. Uh, live in Manhattan or somewhere close by. Immerse yourself. Go put out your resume knowing you're not going to get anything. Uh, go to a theater, see if you can go and look around. Go uh, audition at a theater. Go say you'd love a job at a theater. Immerse yourself. The next vacation, go to L.A. Same thing. Go audition. Go talk to agents. Go take classes. Uh, come home, think about it. The next year, decide what you like the most. Go do it. Maybe go to a... Uh, a college that specializes in, in acting and see if you like that. So 